Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Fine Element Method Study. So today we're going to talk about nonlinear buckling analysis. For those who doesn't have a clear idea what is buckling, basically when a slim but long object under compression, the geometry can have because of the geometry imperfection, you will always have uh, structure instability, which is what we call the buckling. <clears throat> For example, aluminum can under compression, then the wall of the can will be buckled and it can go inside or outside. <clears throat> I think a lot of you just have the experience of crashing a aluminum can. So today we're going to use aluminum can study to simulation to study how to apply nonlinear buckling analysis inside Abacus using Abacus. Here is the general procedures we're going to do because the model created in Abacus is a perfect geometry. So before we do instability analysis, we first need to introduce some imperfection into the geometry. By introducing an imperfection, one can finally reach instability and then buckle to the correct direction. Before doing that, we need to apply linear buckling analysis which provides you with the critical load and also different mode shape of the buckling. The mode shape basically means after buckle, uh, how does your geometry displacement look like? By introducing this one into your abacus input file, basically you can output the mode shape, which is your displacement U. Displacement U as a file. <clears throat> and later in the nonlinear analysis, we input this file and then uh, create the structure, uh, create an imperfection. Later I talk about what, is it, what does this number means. And finally, we'll, we apply the nonlinear buckling analysis. We hope to see how the aluminum can is crushed just like this. So this is our simplified model. To better simplify the aluminum can, we definitely uh, we create a cylindrical shell with radius of 250 millimeter and the height is 500 millimeters. And the thickness for the aluminum can is two millimeter. So very thin but relatively long and large. And the red curve I show here is the age of the cylindrical shell, which if you go back here is bounded by a lot of things. So we can roughly consider that as a rigid body. And the material we are going to use is from MatWeb Aluminum 6061 T6 level and you will have a Young's modulus of 60, uh, 68.9 E3 megapascal, and Poisson's ratio is 0 0.33. And this is the material property we're going to use for the aluminum model. So before, two, uh, the yielding stress for the material is 276. So before that, you will not have plasticity. And the Young's modulus definitely follow this material. And then after that, you will have plasticity inside with 386 by is your ultimate stress and the ultimate elongation, plastic elongation is 23%. So which means 0 0.23 for the plastic strain, plasticity strain. So, <clears throat> Basically, this is our model, uh, uh, material property. And 
let's see how do we apply the abacus GUI for this analysis. So first we create our part, which we call a aluminum can. So it should be a 3D model deformable shell and we can create from extrusion approximate size. Oh, I forgot to mention one thing is everything inside this model should be in the unit sets of millimeter, megapascal, and newton. So let's go back. So we what we apply here is it's roughly 200 and we draw the circ circle whose center is zero, zero. And the radius, because we want the radius to be 250, so we do 250, zero. So now we have a circle of 250. If you see the dimen dimensions is 250. And For the extrusion, we want the depth to be 500 millimeter. Now you have your shell, which if we see X, Y, uh, sorry, X, Z, uh, this one, X, Z coordinate, you will see the cylindrical shell. This is what we call the top edge. This is the bottom edge. We're going to define it later. Next step is the property. We can assign a property aluminum uh, 60, 61, uh, T6. So if you go here, Young's modulus 68.9 six, E3, so mechanical elasticity, isotropic, Young's modulus 68.9 E3, and Poisson's ratio is 0 0.33. And also we add the plasticity. Notice that for the first step of linear buckling analysis, the uh, plasticity material property is actually not used in the, uh, in the analysis. But we have a uh, first yielding point is 276 with a string of yielding uh, plastic string of zero. So 270, sorry. 276 megapascal with yielding plastic strength zero. Hit enter, you can enter the second point is 386, 386 with a plastic strength 23%, so 0 0.23. Notice that this is our ultimate stress, so once you're applying the nonlinear analysis, if your stress is larger than this value, it can actually uh, diverge. So try to, if your solution cannot go through smoothly, try to play, kind of play with the material property. <clears throat> and then this is a, a material property. Then there's the section we create aluminum, Sect, which is uh, shell element homogeneous, and the thickness is for our ge geometry is two millimeter. The reason we use the shell element is it's easier for analysis because this buckling analysis is going to take a relatively long time, about five minutes to ten minutes. So using a shell element can greatly reduce your degrees of freedom. So everything we can keep keep it the same, and then we uh, now we create a section. Create a section. Uh, are we sign? Uh, sorry, I didn't assign that. Uh, we don't need to make a set actually but uh, we can assign the section, which is aluminum metal plane from section down. And when it turns green, it means it's okay. Now we go to assembly, create this 
part uh, this assembly I, I like to use independent then okay this is going to be your geometry and next we directly jump to mesh and for the mesh uh, I like to use control and then swap because it's uh, axisymmetric geometry and then we assign a global seed of 10 uh, approximate global size is 10 millimeter which is one centimeter and then we can do the mesh and we can we check the element type your element type should be s4r which is uh, for no linear inter, uh, reduced integration element and then after creating mesh another thing we need to do for the assembly part is we need to create a set of no so which represent our uh, our uh, rigid body top edge and bottom edge so top node let's choose by feature age which is this age sorry it's a little bit hard to choose and done and then create another set we can open the manager create another set as bottom node let's type it and then again by selecting the feature age you should do the bottom one okay so now we can go back to the step to create the step we call it linear uh, buckling and for linear buckling we do linear perturbation buckled analysis this is just do an analysis of your critical load and the Moshe when you reach the critical load. So the number of eigenvalues values re uh, required, we are going to use three here, which we only output three different mode. Well, and then maximum to make it as fast as possible, we do the maximum also three. And the vector used per interaction is automatically calculated as six. This is a reasonable value. Normally, it can be two times the number of eigenvalues. And the maximum number of iterations, we can do a, a thousand here. Because I, if you do a trial, the maximum can be actually 600 something. So to make it safe, we can do it a thousand. And notice here the eigen solver we use the subspace subspace is eigen is a solver that's easier to solve so like uh solve some if you're uh aiming sets of eigen values is not large then using subspace is much efficient if this is large then using the lenses is much faster so after you create a linear buckling we can go to the interaction so first we need to create two reference point and we can select the this is the top reference point and we do another bottom reference point the reason we create this reference point is later easier to uh, assemble the boundary condition and also do the constraint uh, so constraint here remember we have rigid body for the top edge then we do a constraint of top a just rigid body and then here the reference point for the top we use this first one to represent the point and then choose mm. we need to choose the tide which means combine this one to all the node and then 
select the set we already create, which is the top one. And then everything we can just make it there. Keep it there. So this is your first one. And you need a second rigid body constraint. Let's call it bottom edge. And select the reference point, which make us much easier to apply low later. And then uh, it's picked. And then tied. Tied. If you use tied, it must be node. That's why we do assembly first instead of directly go to interaction. So now we select the sets of bottom. And then everything keep the same. Now you have two point red representing two rigid body, which is the top and bottom. Now you can apply the load. To apply the load, bottom, we are going to fix it. So we apply boundary condition first. Let's say bottom fixed. So choose from the initial, because initial is like from the very beginning, your geometry already satisfied this boundary condition, even before the analysis happened. So we choose the first one, and you choose this set, because this point is already representing the entire edge. And then we use uh, the, uh, the fixed condition here. And for the top, because we only need want it to be buckled in the, sorry, the entire thing is moving downward, like it's moving in the Z, along the Z axis. So we want to fix the X and Y. Let's do the pre-described displacement, call it top. This is more like a roller. So choose the corresponding reference point and we want to fix X and Y, which means U1 and U2. And now we can apply the load. The load definitely you should be in the step. Let's call it linear load. It should be a concentrated force applied on the top. And we apply the unit. Well, definitely it should be along the Z axis, which is your buckling direction. So the first two is zero. And the third one, uh, we apply minus one. Minus means compression. One means uh, we normalize the force. So later when you get the eigenvalue, it will be your force critical load. We don't need to divide or multiply by this value anymore. So you can kind of check your load is pointing downward. That means it's okay. Now, since everything is okay, then we can do the job here. Create a job, uh, create a job, call it linear buckling. This job is kind of important because later we are going to, uh, we are going to use the same name for our output mode and everything just leave it the same. Don't use parallelization because this is only one step, uh, one step thing. So once you create a model, you can go to model again. Model here, uh, the add a keyword here. You will have this input file or you can in your local folder, find the IMP file and directly change it. That's another way to do it. And the reason we are doing that is we haven't output the mode shape. Remember, we need to output the mode shape. We need to ty type this one, which is, I already put it in the text file, which is start node blank FIL, which means output the node file uh, and the one we are going to record is the U comma. So copy that and paste it, uh, paste that uh, right before your output field. So uh, uh, let me see. 
let's do here right before your end step uh, we can do a double dot just to separate that and then we just write input and check uh, before uh, well check the definitely you can check the data whether it works or not and then before you actually start running the analysis I would suggest you to go to the uh, folder that you have the uh, file let's say uh, uh, this is a folder I have the file and see the in, in let me see imp file if you open that that should give you a long list go all the way at the end you should see this one which is what you add here and check complete that means you can submit for result here I just want to save your time because I already run the result this result is going to take probably two or three minutes depends on your computer and so let's all directly open the result to see once your result is done you should have this geometry here and if you see the buckling this one will show your increment and this is a base state which means zero loading oh sorry it's upside down z axis should be top and then Uh, uh, sorry, I think my result is not there. So like, let's directly run the, let's directly run this one to get the result. Once you check the data, the original file can be gone. So you can open your monitor to kind of see is there any arrows or arrows or warnings inside your analysis. Another thing you need to know is after your analysis is done in your file, you should have a FIL file uh, called linear buckling and which is the same as your job name so this job name is very important it's going to be your file that input to the nonlinear analysis later uh, okay uh, while waiting, we can kind of review like what you do you need to do in the linear analysis step. So first create the par material property. Uh, you can add the plus plasticity inside, but that one doesn't really uh, affect your linear analysis. And, and then create assembly, which is your instant, and then Go directly up, create the mesh, and then select the top and bottom node, and then go back to a step, create the linear perturbation analysis, select the buckling, and we only need three more here. If you want a better geometry representation, you can do more, but three is enough for later analysis. And by selecting that, we can uh, we can get our step and then we apply the constraint of rigid body. Rigid body, we have a top edge rigid body analysis and the bottom edge rigid body and uh, rigid body constraint. Sorry, top edge rigid body constraint and bottom edge rigid body constraint. And then, uh, uh, and then. After you have the constraint, 
use a reference point to represent the rigid body edge. Uh, and then go to your uh, loading part, apply the boundary condition. The boundary condition at the bottom is fixed. And on the top is, uh, uh, it's more like a roller for either y, uh, x or y direction. Finally, you need to apply a normalized compression, which has an amplitude of one, which means one Newton. And this will multiply to uh, whatever load you have. And this will apply to whatever uh, eigenvalues you have later. So you're still doing the analysis. And then finally, the most important thing is we need to go to the model and write this one right before the end. And or you can go to your input file, linear buckling, and then go all the way down and then change that one to change that uh, like add this one like uh, after the output so it is done now S go to the result now you can see the deformation and you have three buckling this is your first uh, this is your first mode uh, sorry this is your base state which means it doesn't have any force. And the next one is your first one. You can see the eigenvalue is like 1.0726 uh, E6 uh, Newtons. And the deformed geometry is kind of like this one. Uh, it's weird, I know, but it's like after you apply that load, like the critical deformable value is, should be looked like that. And the second one is kind of like a, like a symmetric in, in this axis, which is pretty much similar to the first mode, which with 1.0729 as the eigenforce. And then this is a third mode, which is, uh, doesn't have any, it's not that symmetric from this view. And it's also close to the first two mode. And after that, you are supposed to get the field output. If you open that with your uh, notepad, well, it, well, I didn't show it good here. You should see something inside, but this is your file. And later we are going to use this file to actually input to our nonlinear analysis. So now, once you have this one, we can go, to, go back to the step. We don't need to actually change that much, but we can suppress the linear buckling analysis and create a nonlinear one. Nonlinear buckling analysis. So, in this one, we use the Rick's statics, which is a good study for any instability, uh, instable state of statics. So open that, and then we definitely need nonlinear. And then this increment is something you can play along with. So the maximum number of increment is more like number of trials and I will enter 500. Normally it's like 200 to 300, it should be done. If it doesn't down, it will abort it. But it's fine, totally fine if it is aborted because your material property may not support the geometry. Like the nonlinear can make your solution diverge. It's not necessarily to converge. But if uh, 500 is just to encase that, just to make it enough, and the initial arc length, we can do 1e minus 3 because this is pretty small. Like, uh, 
we should start with a pretty small arc. Arc means like to trace your solution, how long should it be? So it's kind of similar to time, but it's not exactly time. So minimum, we need to make it as smaller, 5e minus 6. If your solution doesn't converge, you can make it even smaller. And the maximum, we just put it 1 to make the analysis relatively stable. Otherwise, it can easily diverge. So everything is down here, and then you create the step. And interaction, you don't need to recreate that because it's nothing related to the step. And then load boundary condition because we create in initials, we don't need to change it. The only thing we need to change is the load. The original load we apply in the step, linear step. Now for nonlinear, we need to create a nonlinear load. Or we can call it critical load. Concentrated force. Remember uh, that our critical load for the first mode is 1.07 uh, e to the power of th 6. So apply load on first edge uh, reference point, definitely. And then since that one is uh, 1e6, we would do probably minus 1.1e6. So it's a little bit larger than the critical load. Definitely this is, this is too large compared to critical load, so this geometry will crash. But sometimes it may diverge, so you cannot go too large. It should be some reasonable value. You can try until it kind of makes sense. And then mesh, you don't need to change it. Everything looks good. Then we can go to the job to create a step called nonlinear. And based on the model, and definitely we can delete this one. And based on the model, now, uh, sorry, one thing I forgot to say is nonlinear is a step-by-step -step analysis. So now you can use parallelization, which for my system is in the performance task manager, you can see I have 12 logical processor. So I will use like 10 here and then hit OK. Now it's the second step. How do we, the geometry is perfect geometry. Uh, with this geometry, actually, you can. It's hard to get a reasonable result. So we need to introduce imperfection into our geometry. To introduce imperfection, you need to use this one. So let's go to. I already read it. Write it down here. Sorry, not this one. So this is how you introduce imperfection. Imperfection file is the file we created here. And this is the name of your analysis. Step one is like, it will read the result from step one because you only have one step. And because we have three more, so we have index of one, two, three. And this represents that you use a displacement for your mole shape and give it a 0 0.2 in thickness in perfection. R record our uh, thickness of, a, of the wall is two millimeter. So we do like a one tenth of the imperfection to represent the, in the real thing. It's like a clearance of manufacturing. And for mode two is half of mode one, and for mode three is half of mode two. And definitely this is some random number. You can make it smaller, but it should be remains in some reasonable value. And by copying that to your input file, again, you can use keyword, edit keyword. And then we can go all the way down here. Uh, right after your step. So, uh, it should it can be here, so we can do this one, just copy and paste, and then we can do another split mark here, 
and then OK. And do data check, write input, you will get the result. Similarly, I won't run the result here because it may take time. But uh, as I said, it can be aborted due to like in the middle of the analysis. And because your analysis is very large. So to if you it's totally fine if you get aborted, just see your result whether it is reasonable or not. Uh, if it is not reasonable, then try to go back and change your material property, uh, your arc length, you can make it smaller, and then anything you think is reasonable in this project. Now I just output the result I get. This is the result I get. Sorry, let's go back to time zero. And if you follow whatever, uh, if you follow the step I do, you should get this result, which is uh, if I play the animation, you will see when you have those, uh, when you have some load, you will have a little buckling on the side first, and then this part is uh, go inside the wall a lot. If you see the inner surface is like that, this is kind of like a mode three to me. And then if you apply more mode, then it becomes a nonlinear. You have plus the deformation and the geometry will crash because of that. And this is your final shape, which is just uh, like your can when you apply pressure, it will always look like that. And if you want, you can create a like create a set here and output the xy data because here the output output xy data is related to arc length which is related to your time but it's not exactly your time it's more like an analysis step so uh you can create two value one is the applied load related to arc length the other is the corresponding displacement for point of interest. And then for this two, you can create uh, XY data and then output into the Excel file and later do uh, uh, in the Excel file, you can plot the, <coughs> sorry, in the Excel file, you can plot the uh, force versus displacement. And you will see the nonlinear effect. Uh, that's all about the uh, buckling analysis, uh, a non uh, nonlinear buckling analysis. And take a quick review. We apply, apply the uh, compression due to the geometry imperfection. You will, your geometry can buckle. And to achieve this, we need to introduce geometry imperfection first. Those imperfections are obtained from a linear buckling analysis and obtain the mold shape. And with a very small thickness, we introduce the imperfection to our ge geometry, and then we apply the nonlinear buckling analysis. And this, with the plastic uh, deformation constant and the linear deformation, definitely linear elastic region. And this geometry, we should obtain the effect like how the structure get crushed when the, when the applied force is getting larger. It's larger than the critical value. I didn't apply the surface contact here. So you can see the node can actually go inside to the geometry. If you want to do a more realistic analysis, you can apply the surface interaction. So that's all about the nonlinear buckling analysis. Hope that all of you can learn something. Thanks for listening to this video.